Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report, and today's show is presented by our good friends, Manscaped. Head on over to manscaped.com and use promo code Raiders where you can save 20% off and get free shipping. I'll tell you what, man, with the summer heat, you better make sure your balls are nice and silky smooth because if not, I don't know, it's going to be a little nasty down there. Manscaped doesn't want that to happen to y'all, and neither do I. So what I want you guys to keep in mind is this. Circle it on your calendar. I am going to be live here on the Raiders Report 15 minutes before kickoff for the NFL Hall of Fame game. So at 7.45 Eastern Time, 4.45 Pacific Time, me and all of you here live on the Raiders Report. There's going to be thousands of people tuning in. We're going to have the game right up on here. We're going to do the play-by-play. -play. We're going to be celebrating. So even if you can't go to the game, even if you, the game doesn't show in your area, I got you guys covered. It's free to watch, and I promise you this, you're going to have a good time. So coming up here on today's show, we're going to look at a Raiders versus Jaguars preview and the top five things that I believe every single person from Raider Nation should watch for. We're going to be looking at the offense, we're going to be looking at the defense, and we're going to be having a good time. So anytime we talk about games, I'm always curious of, what you guys have to think about it, and the fact that this game is on Thursday, August 4th. Last season, the Raiders were 10-7. and The Jags, they were 3-14. and We'll get into some of the odds a little bit later on near the very, very back end of the show. But here's the one thing that I want you guys to do for a lot of the new viewers. I'm going to ask you who you got. And I know most of y'all are going to type LV, but these are the type of shows that a lot of Jags fans, because who the hell covers the Jags on YouTube, are going to come across our YouTube channel. And there's going to be people in the chat that type JAC. This is the Raiders report, and I want you to treat this show, this comment section, like you would the Coliseum, like you would Allegiant Stadium, and I want this thing to be ran by the nation. So if you come across this video, spam LV down in the chat. Now, in terms of the preseason game, the NFL Hall of Fame, you don't really see too many starters out there. And according to Ian Rappaport, Jaguars coach Doug Peterson announced that Trevor Lawrence and Travis Etienne will not play in the Hall of Fame game on Thursday. Expect the Raiders to be on the same page with several starters watching from the sideline. So who's going to be the starting quarterback for the Jags? Good old Jake Lutton. Why? C.J. Beathard is also battling an injury, so it's your third string quarterback. And in his career, 54.5% completion percentage, 624 yards, two touchdowns, six interceptions. I know this defensive back unit has been looking really, really strong, and I hope they look really strong against good old Jake Lutton. Now, in terms of who's going to be out there on the field, I know what Rappaport said, but until Josh McDaniels comes out and say that, hey, a lot of the starters aren't going to play, then so be it. But when you go back and look at a lot of those preseason games with McDaniels, they played some of their starters. So it hasn't had the door shut. I would say you might see 15 to 20% of the Raiders starters, though, out there in the Hall of Fame game. So coming up next here on the Raiders Report, I'm going to tell you what you should be watching for because you can learn a lot from a preseason game. I could make the argument that the guys that are playing in the Hall of Fame game might be a little bit lower on the overall depth chart and have to work their way up. So if you see a starter out there, it might not mean that they're an actual starter. But in terms of what I'm watching for against Jacksonville, I'm looking at that quarterback two battle, which is between Nick Mullins and Jarrett Stidham. I will say, you might see somebody like Chase Garbers out there. Derek might even suit up here a little bit. We'll see ultimately what happens. But last season, Garbers at Cal, he threw for 2,531 yards. 64.3% completion percentage, had 16 touchdowns, had eight interceptions, and he's battling for a roster spot. Do I think he gets it? No, of course I don't. But the battle that I'm going to be looking at is Jarrett Stidham up against Nick Mullins. And from a career standpoint, Jarrett Stidham has played in eight NFL games, and Mullins has played in 20 career games. Completion percentage, advantage Mullins. Yards, touchdowns, interceptions, quarterback rating, all advantage Mullins. However... The Raiders traded for Stidham. He has this already known for the playbook that McDaniels likes to run, and it does sound like it's going to be Stidham that ends up getting the start. But the question that I have for all of y'all, because no disrespect to Mullins, no disrespect to Stidham, no disrespect to Garbers, 
They're not my quarterback. DC's my QB. And do you want to see DC out there this Thursday? Type that Y for yes, or you could spam N for no. Let's go to the next thing that I believe every single person from the nation should be watching. Which wide receivers end up stepping up? And you know what? Before I tell you which wide receivers I'm going to be looking at, remember, the Raiders report is presented by Manscaped. Use promo code Raiders where? At manscaped.com because you can get 20% off and free shipping. The, the uh, product that I want you to use is the Lawnmower 4.0 because this is going to be the best way that you get the most high-quality shape. The reason why I love this thing, it's got... A light on the end of that tunnel, right? It's got the light on the very end of it. So when you're getting into those hard to reach places, for one, you can see what you're doing. When I'm in the shower, because this thing is waterproof, water resistant, you're not going to get any rub and tug. You're not going to get any like wear and tear on your body. And the battery life on this thing is very impressive. And there's a light on it. I don't know if y'all have ever been um, <laughs> shaving anywhere and then the battery dies because you don't really know when it's going to happen. This tells you when the battery life is going to end up dying. So take advantage of this deal right now. Usually it's 90 bucks, but if you use promo code Raiders at Manscaped.com, you can get it for $71.99. Let's look at the wide receiver room because I don't know if Adams or Renfro end up suiting up. Personally, I don't think they need to, but every other receiver that you see, Keelan Cole, Matt Collins, Dylan Stoner, Demarcus Robinson, Johnson, Turner, Hall, VC, I think they all have a shot to play, though, Actually, I don't know if Stoner, because I think he's actually banged up right now. He's a little hurt. But in terms of who I'm going to be watching, I'm looking at this wide receiver three battle. I'm looking at Keelan Cole. I'm looking at Demarcus Robinson, Matt Collins. And these are the numbers that they put up last season, which is great and all. But Cole's a better route runner. Demarcus is a good athlete. Hollins, I think you could see being used as an outside receiver and special teams. A lot of versatility here. And whoever wins that battle... Couldn't end up being that third wide receiver. But you know who you shouldn't forget about? Tyron Johnson, because the hype around him, it's legit. That speed, you can't teach it. And if he can continue to get better, not only we, the speed, you can't teach speed, but if he can continue to get better as a route runner in the red zone, that's where the chemistry with Derek Carr is going to continue to grow. So I'm going to be watching those four receivers very, very closely. Now, in terms of some other players, DJ Turner, he was a special teams guy that I liked. Good little slot receiver. And I do think that there is a battle between DJ Turner and Justin Hall of who's going to be that gadget receiver on the practice squad. I've been told that Justin Hall has a leg up on the competition. And last season at Ball State, this kid's like a human joystick. Yes, he's small at five foot eight, but the way he can maneuver on the football field, 61 catches last season, 613 yards. Five receiving touchdowns, six rushing touchdowns. Somebody said something about a Swiss Army knife. That's what he can be used as. And if you're looking for somebody that could be a special teams guy, Justin Hall is a sneaky, sneaky name. Let's go to the entire offensive line next because you got to look for it. John Lord, I saw the super. We're going to party. The entire offensive line, man. And John Simpson, Andre James, Dylan Parham, Brandon Parker, all the other names down there, Tyron Wheatley, Bam, Jermaine Illuminor, Alex Bars, Lester Cotton, Alex Leatherwood, Thayer Munford. Here is my take. Every single offensive lineman should play not named Colton Miller. Why? Because as far as I'm concerned, every single one of those offensive linemen, they're fighting for a spot. Do I think Andre James starts at center? Yeah. Do I think John Simpson starts at left guard? Probably. Right guard, is it going to be, I don't know, Lester Cotton? I, I, I don't know. There are so many question marks around that offensive line that I'm sorry. Do I want to see an injury happen? No, but this is the this is the NFL. This is football. Injuries are going to happen. And if you go out there and you play scared, that's never the way to do it. So if we can't see what happens at training camp all the time, I want to see what happens in the preseason. Because if I want to be able to see how my offensive line works together as a unit, we can actually build some chemistry. Because I do not want week one to come around the corner against the Los Angeles Chargers, a division rival, and we're sitting here with our thumbs up our you-know-what because we still don't know who this offensive line is. You know how's a good way to determine who the offensive line is? By playing them in the preseason. And that way we can get a better gauge overall 
of what ends up happening here because I'm sorry. Colton Miller's the only guy I got confidence in. Can players get better? Of course they can. But until that happens, I don't know what to think, man. Now, if you agree with that statement and if you're excited for some Raiders football, because, man, I'm telling you what, I'm psyched. I want you to like the video right now on YouTube. There's a thumbs up icon. It looks just like that. Underneath this video, you click that thumbs up button. That tells my bosses that I'm doing the right things. And it shows me that you're excited for some football because, I don't know about y'all, I'm ready for some football. Let's go to the next thing that I'm watching for for the Raiders up against the Jags. It's the defensive tackle room. And basically what I just said about the offensive line, I think you could apply that to the defensive tackle room, right? Now, you're not going to see Hankins. You're not going to see Bilal Nichols because those guys are battling some injuries. I'm not 100% sure how much you see of Vernon Butler either because he's had some injuries. But in terms of Tyler Lancaster... I'm going to be watching him if he's out there. I know he missed practice on Monday. Andrew Billings, Kendall Vickers, Kyle Petko, Myron Tagovailoa, Amosa. And then, of course, I'm going to be watching my two rookies. You drafted these two rookies in the 2022 NFL Draft. And from a college standpoint, both played in the SEC. Both played from 2017 to 21. And they're very different DTs. Matthew Butler, to me, is more of a guy that's a little bit undersized, has a higher upside, in my personal opinion, can get after the quarterback. And then Neil Farrell Jr. is a tackle eater. He's going to take on a lot of double teams. He's a big body. Their numbers are very similar. But how about this? Because I am genuinely curious of which one of those two dudes you're more excited about. Are you more excited to watch Matthew Butler play? Or... Are you more excited to watch Neil Farrell Jr. play? So if you're excited to watch Butler type B, if you're excited to watch Farrell type F, let me know which one of our rookie defensive tackles are you the most excited to watch. The final thing that I'm going to be looking at is the depth at our linebacking positions because the loss of Kyler Fackrell, the loss of Micah Kaiser, I don't think Kaiser would have made the 53, but I did have Kyler Fackrell down there. And... I know Perriman's the guy. I know Divine Diablo is the guy. I know Jayon Brown. I know they're all going to make the team. But after that, I think that there's a coin flip between Kenny Young, Butler, Lucas Masterson, and then who the Raiders just went out and signed and Colton Bolton. But, or Curtis Bolton, excuse me. The one dude, though, who I can't wait to watch is Darian Butler. UDFA linebacker from Arizona State because he was a training camp winner for me. All reports are looking like this kid is legit. And he's put up some good numbers at Arizona State. And I know I've said this already a lot when I talk about Butler. But he looks like somebody who's been working with Antonio Pierce for four years over a lot of these other linebackers. Why? Because he has. So the Raiders linebacking coach, they have him. Antonio Pierce has his guy Butler, who was an absolute wrecking ball in the Pac-12. Good overall tackler. He can go against the pass as well. All I'm saying is, if he can go out there and perform in the preseason, that UDFA has a chance to make the roster. The other player that I'm obviously watching is Curtis Bolton. Coming out of Oklahoma, he's been a spark plug. He had 142 tackles his final year with the Sooners. So if he can get out there, I've heard a lot of good things about him being a locker room guy. He is a coverage liability, but hopefully he can step up. And then Luke Masterson, the UDFA out of Wake Forest, 85 tackles last season. 13 tackles for loss, two and a half sacks. I know there's some people out there that like his ability, but from what I have been told, it is Butler is up here, Masterson is down there. But who knows? Maybe you can get the gap a little bit closer. So here's what I'm watching for y'all up against the Jags on Thursday. NFL Hall of Fame game, the quarterback two battle. Which wide receivers end up stepping up? The entire offensive line, not named Colt Miller, the defensive tackle room, and then the extra depth at linebacker after two season-ending injuries. And you never like to see a season-ending injury, but I can make the argument that I would rather it happen now than happen four weeks from now because now you can at least make some adjustments. So the NFL Hall of Fame game is on Thursday in Canton, Ohio, and the Raiders are one-point favorites. The over-under is 30 and a half points. And I know I asked you earlier who you got, but I'm a betting man. I like to have some fun. And I want to know from everyone who's watching right now, predict the score. Raiders against the Jags. Predicting preseason football, it's never an easy thing to do. But you know what? Football's back. I'm excited it's back. And I want you guys to predict the score with me right now. 
All right, guys, it's the end of the video. Appreciate to all the real ones out there that made it to the end. When you watch to the very, very end of a Raiders Report video, it goes a long way. And I appreciate you guys taking time out of your day because there's nothing more valuable in life than time. So the fact that you spend it watching my vids, I promise you, that's why I have the dedication that I do. And shout out to all the real ones out there. So if you made it to the end of the video, spam real one down in the chat.